Hello, welcome to Introduction to Stories, and let me introduce you to today's book, African Caribbean Folk Tales, Myths and Legends by Wendy Shearer and published by Scholastics Books. Now, this is a book that you don't need to read from page one all the way to the end. You can actually skip around a bit because it's a collection of short stories of mythology, legends and folk tales and so on. Yeah, you've seen the title. And I'm going to dive quite deep into the book, into this story, which is one of my favourites. It's called Aunt Misery's Starfruit Tree. And this is a Puerto Rican myth, legend or folktale. And it's really good because it's kind of an explanation of how something that exists in our world is still here today. So it's kind of a morality tale. It's also trying to do some explaining and it's just a good I was going to say fun tale, but it's not fun once well, you'll see when I get into it. But it does make me think about eating some fruit. And it also makes me think like a good folk tale or a myth or a legend should. So let's get straight into it. Aunt Misery's Starfruit Tree. On a small island in the Caribbean Sea, there once lived an old woman. Her most prized possession was a beautiful starfruit tree that grew the sweetest fruit. Mm -hmm. Each day, the boys and girls in the village would sneak up to her wooden house, which sat high upon its wooden stilts and climb into her tree. Swinging and laughing, they plucked the delicious fruit, which hung from each branch like yellow star-shaped diamonds. You little thieves, get down from my tree, the old woman would scold, but they just laughed and called her Aunt Misery running away with the sweet fruit from her tree. It happened so often that the name Aunt Misery stuck with everyone in the village and they soon forgot her real name. One day, the rain beat down hard like a drum and the sea breeze carried a new visitor through the village. He made his way past the market stalls that sold fresh fish through the mango groves and coca fields until he finally reached Aunt Misery's house. He knocked on her door and explained that he was a poor traveller in need of some help. Can you spare some food and a bed for the night? he asked. His young face was kind and his voice was soothing. Aunt Misery rarely welcomed visitors but decided that he had asked so politely she would make an exception. She made a simple yet hearty meal of peas and rice flavoured with herbs and spices which the hungry traveller devoured quickly. After eating, the two of them sat outside on Aunt Misery's veranda, sipping bittersweet juice from the fruit of the mulberry tree, listening to the chorus of crickets and tree frogs. I would like to repay you for your hospitality, said the young man. I can't offer much, but I can grant you one wish, anything you want. The old woman's eyes shone in the darkness at the stranger's words. She knew he must be a sorcerer in disguise. She fought hard and then said, I wish for anyone who climbs my starfruit tree to remain stuck in its branches until I release them. She couldn't wait to teach the local children a lesson for stealing her beloved starfruit. The following morning, just as dawn kissed the sky, the young man packed up his few belongings and tapped the bark of the old woman's starfruit tree. He granted her wish and carried on with his journey. Later that day, three boys came, eager to pluck starfruit from the tree. They climbed up high and swung on the gnarled branches, filling their school bags with long-fingered fruit. When Aunt Misery stepped out from her house, they jeered and sang, Oh, Aunt Misery, come for we, she can't catch us up high in the tree. But when they tried to get down, they found their feet wouldn't move. No matter how hard they pushed, they could not climb down from the starfruit tree. They were stuck. Ha! cried Aunt Misery. And there you will stay until I decide otherwise. The boys were terrified and begged her to let them come down. Finally, just before night came and the fireflies lit up the grass, Aunt Misery declared, I will release you if you promise never to steal from my starfruit tree again. The boys agreed and scrambled away, yelling as they ran. Aunt Misery's a witch. She's an old witch. When the villagers heard what she had done to the boys, some of them weren't surprised. I knew she was an old witch, a few of them said, and they warned their children not to bother her again. Time passed, as time does. 
Both Aunt Misery and her tree grew crooked and lined with age, but the tree's golden star fruit continued to bring her happiness. One cool evening, the sea breeze swirled and snaked its way through the village again. This time, it brought a different visitor to Aunt Misery's door. His dark eyes were hollow and his voice carried no warmth. I am deaf, he said slowly. I have come to take you with me. Aunt Misery knew that it was her time, but she was not ready to die. She thought of her golden star fruit, wanting to taste it one more time. And suddenly she had an idea. Before you take me, Deaf, will you please climb up my tree and pick a star fruit for me? I am too old to climb and I would like to have one last taste of my delicious fruit, she explained. Deaf nodded solemnly and climbed the tree. He reached with his long limbs and picked some of the fruit, whilst Aunt Misery looked on from below. When he finished picking, he tried to place his feet on the lower branches, but they bounced back up again. What is wrong with my feet? He thought to himself, thinking that perhaps the branches were too far away. He moved around the tree to the other side, but the same thing happened again. He climbed a little higher to see if he could still go up and then suddenly realised that he could not go back down. <laughs> what spell have you cast? He called down to Art Misery, noticing that she was laughing out loud. Oh, just a little something that only I can change. She squealed with delight. Death was stuck in Art Misery's starfruit tree and there was nothing he could do about it. I have work to do, complained Death. Release me at once or you'll be sorry, he threatened but Aunt Misery ignored him. She was so happy her plan had worked that she did a little dance. As long as death could not take her, she could live forever and continue to enjoy her star fruit every day. She went back inside her house and slept soundly that night. The following morning, a boy named Edmund came to test out Aunt Misery's star fruit tree. He did not believe the story his friends told. As he approached Aunt Misery's house, he saw death sitting comfortably at the top of the tree. Who are you? Edmund asked as he walked around the tree. I'm deaf, he said gloomily. Edmund thought for a minute, wondering why deaf would be in Aunt Misery's tree. Why are you sitting up in the tree? Aunt Misery's trapped me. Are you stuck? Edmund asked. Yes, I deaf. He felt quite embarrassed to be found in the tree. Edmund started laughing and pointing at Death, singing, Death is stuck in Aunt Misery's tree. With all his power, he can't get free. He can't get up. He can't get back down. His face is long, like his big black gown. He ran back to the village to tell everyone that Death was trapped in Aunt Misery's tree and couldn't get down. Meanwhile, she was content in her little wooden house. She was happy spending her days cooking delicious stews, making sweet drinks and tending to her animals. But death, being un unable to leave, meant that no one in the village could die. The village became overcrowded as the young people grew up and the old people remained. The funeral parlour was empty and the grave diggers had nothing to do. Everyone became lazy as they knew they would live forever. Jobs went unfinished and parks were overflowing with people sitting around, bored and doing nothing. Queues at the shops snaked all around the village with people hoping to get things to eat. There wasn't enough food growing fast enough to feed so many people. The hospital remained empty as no one became sick, but people grew old and tired of living. One evening, just before the crickets and bullfrogs began their chorus of croaking, a few of the older villagers gathered together to find a solution. They sat under the flame trees in the market square and listened to each other's ideas. Dr. Rummy spoke first. He was bored now that nobody was visiting his surgery. One of us needs to go and speak to Aunt Misery. Explain to her what is happening in the village because of the way she has trapped death. Maybe she doesn't realise, offered Maria, who ran the local bakery. Her business was booming now that no one was worried about eating too much. She was overwhelmed with requests for sweetbread rolls, guava pastries and delicious papaya cakes. Maybe she doesn't care, said Matteo, whose pharmacy was always empty because no one needed to buy medicines now that they could not die. She is happy and not affected by anything going on in the village, he reminded them. But what if death takes a way to escape, said another. He will come to take her like anyone else. She would never agree to let him go if he would take her with him. It was agreed 
that they would visit Aunt Misery and beg her to release Death, so that life could go on without all these worries. Early the next morning, a few of the villagers headed over to Aunt Misery's home. They saw Death sitting in the starfruit tree and wondered if he had a plan for getting down. Death, how long are you going to stay up there? They asked. Death shrugged. Ask Aunt Misery, he said, pointing as she came towards them. Aunt Misery had heard voices and was surprised to see visitors. What are you all doing here? She asked crossly. After all, they had never visited her before. The villagers looked humble and said, Aunt Misery, we know you don't want death to take you, but the village is overcrowded. Us old people are getting older, the sick can't die, and there's not enough food to feed everyone. Aunt Misery's heart softened. She had not realised that other people might still need death around. For her, he was an unwelcome visitor. Well, I can't release him, she said stubbornly. He'll take me with him, and I'm not going. You're such an old misery, cried one of the villagers. We need death to get back to his job. Aunt Misery's face became sour, and she shooed them off her land. After feeding her animals and tending to her plants, she sat stewing for a while, thinking over what had been said. Despite her anger at being called Old Misery, she didn't want to cause any more harm and wondered if there was a way to make everyone happy, including Death. Later that evening, she made a suggestion. If you never come back for me, she said to Death, I will release you from the starfruit tree. Death loved to make a bargain, but he did not want to let her off that easily. She had kept him from his work, which he enjoyed. I will leave you a few more years if you release me, he said, hoping that she would agree. No, said Aunt Misery, and turned to walk away. Death did not like being in this position. Aunt Misery was completely in charge. I could punish you right now and turn you into a stone. Death's eyes blazed angrily, but Aunt Misery was too clever and not scared of his threats. Well, you'd still be stuck in my tree, she sniped back. With a sigh, Death relented knowing he had no other options. Old Misery's deal was the only one he was going to get, and so he agreed to let her live forever, if she released him. The pair shook hands, and Death went about his business. He had actually quite liked his break from taking lives, but was happy to get back to work. And so that is why we have Misery in our world today. Our Misery made a deal with Death, and she is still alive somewhere as miserable as ever. Well, there you go. An introduction to African Caribbean Folk Tales, Myths and Legends by Wendy Shearer, published by Scholastics Books, who I'd like to thank for giving me permission to read this extract to you today. This is a great book if you like reading up on mythologies from various ancient cultures, like, do you like Norse mythology, uh, Egyptian, Greek, Roman, which is just Greek in disguise, and, you know, lots of other mythologies around the world. This is another great set of legends and mythologies and folk tales and like monsters and gods and creation myths and how this got into the world and why it's still around today. The reason why people write these stories in the first place is because ancient humans used to look around the world and try to figure out what it all meant, but also impart some wisdom. And who knows what wisdom you might find in this book. So give it a go. I'm pretty sure you can get it at all good bookstores and at, certainly at your local library. So thanks for listening to this introduction to this book. Thanks for watching.